Hi everyone, welcome to chapter 5, time series. Uh, this is the last chapter of topic 1, data analysis. And we're going to be starting off with lesson 5.1, features of time series data. Uh, lesson objectives for lesson 5.1. Uh, we'll look at what is a time series. Uh, basically it's just a scatter plot where the explanatory variable is time. And then we'll just look at features of time series data. So we'll look at the uh, trends, cycles, seasonality, structural change, outliers, and irregular or random fluctuations. And lastly, we'll look at how to construct a time series plot on the CAS calculator. So a time series plot, uh, it's just a scatter plot, but you have uh, on the x-axis uh, where you put your explanatory variable, uh, that is always going to be time. So it might be time in years, months, days, minutes, seconds, uh, any of that, just as long as that variable is a unit of time. And then on your um, y-axis, your response variable could be anything. Uh, so you could be looking at uh, changes in sales over time, so sales figures. And you could, so for every year, that might be your, uh, so we'll say time in years. And we just plot the points here. And then the other feature of a time series plot is that the points are connected with a straight line between each point. And that will give you the, you can see, um, more clearly see trends in the data uh, looking at it like this. So that's the time series plot. It's just a scatter plot, uh, but with, so you've got time as your explanatory variable and the data points are connected connected so that's a time series plot that's what we'll be focusing on in, in this chapter and now we'll just look at the features of a time series so different things that uh, you can look at to try and describe a time series plot with uh, so the first thing we'll look at is just the trend so the trend is just your uh, general uh, either increasing or decreasing trend over a, a long period of time. Uh, so despite you know, short-term fluctuations, so I'll just give a little example here. So say we might have some data like this. And I'll just connect it. I'll just highlight it here. Oh, that's not going to work. Um... So yeah, just can't, oh, this is going to be hard. Let's see, can we get this highlighter any shorter? Yes, okay. Yeah, so the basic trend, something like that. Uh, so you can see over time there are some short term uh, fluctuations that go up and down, uh, but over the long over the whole period of data here, there is a general increase in trend. So if you were to fit a trend line, like that red line, uh, that's approximately how it would be. And this is increasing. So over time, you could say there's just an increasing trend. So you'd either have an increasing, or you could have a decreasing trend. Pretty simple. Uh, pretty much any... Uh, time series plot, probably going to have some sort of increasing or decreasing trend over time. And another thing to note is that you can have uh, multiple trends. So if, if you had a plot, uh, for the first little bit you might have an increasing trend, then the data might shift to a decreasing trend for the next you know, decent amount of time and so on. So just remember that. you can. There's not always going to be one trend over the whole period of time. There might be a few different positive and negative movements. So you could look at something like this just quickly. So you've got sort of positive trend in this period of time and then it goes negative here and then it might go positive again. So in these clear regions here, so here you've got some positive trend, here's a bit of a negative trend and here there's another positive trend and that might be a period of 10 years uh, in between each. So that's positive, negative, positive. Uh, next, we'll look at cycles. 
Uh, so cycles, they're periodic movements in a time series, but over a period uh, greater than one year. So that's the defining uh, characteristic, that these cycles are over a period greater than one year. Uh, so if we look at an example here of a time series plot, have some data, so we might be going up, up and down over a period here. So like this, and on our, uh, so this is our time, we'll say this is in years, and we'll say that's one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, and so on. So you can see, uh, so the overall cycle here, so it starts here, to here, to here, so that's one sort of cycle as you go up and down, and that's over a period here, uh, greater than greater than one year, sorry that's accidentally erased all of that, uh, but yeah, over that period there, that's, you know, a couple of years, a couple of years, a couple of years and so on, the pattern uh, might repeat or it might not, uh, but you can describe a time series plot like this to have um, cycles because uh, the cycles are going to be over a period greater than one year. So cyclic data, so each cycle is greater than one year. And so that's the difference between uh, cycles and seasonality. Seasonality is the same thing, you've got these periodic movements like cycles but uh, less than one year. So the seasonal pattern. So similarly, uh, you can have a spike in your sales in summer maybe and it declines in winter, so as you go from season to season, so this might be summer, autumn, winter, spring, you might be high, and it starts getting lower, lower, and then when you get to spring, and then summer again, you get higher, so you have this pattern here, like this, but because uh, th these cycles uh, are the period of the cycle is less than one year. Uh, you describe it as seasonal, seasonal, a seasonal pattern to the data. So seasonality or a seasonal pattern occurs when the data, this pattern, is less than one year. So if you had a time series plot like this, uh, you could describe it as having uh, seasonality or a seasonal pattern. So that's the difference there uh, between seasonality and uh, cycles. Uh, next we'll look at structural change. And so structural change is when there is a uh, just a sudden change in the established pattern of a time series plot. Uh, so maybe you know we've generally got data up here and then all of a sudden something happens uh, some exogenous factor happen uh, occurs to your data that has an effect on your data like this and suddenly you drop right down uh, so maybe uh, this could be uh, someone's points per game if they were playing basketball and suddenly they had an injury about this time and they came back and they weren't playing so well they were scoring less points so there's been a structural change so here that's where your change is So if you see this, so the general pattern of the data is basically that there's not really an increasing or decreasing trend, uh, but there is the data, the data is generally at the, about this level, and then afterwards it drops down to this level. So there is a change in the established pattern there. So that would be points. If you were going. So always remember to label uh, your, your, your plots or your graphs. Uh, just to be concise here, I'm not doing that, but and for these examples, um, but whenever you, you have to draw draw a graph, uh, remember to label it. Uh, so this is oh this wouldn't be so time. Or we could just say um, this probably wouldn't be the best example for a time series plot. Uh, 
but we'll, well, let's just say this is points scored per minute or something. So that is our, uh, so you scale the variable on your um, x-axis scale here is going to be minutes, time in minutes. Okay. So that's an example of structural change, uh, sudden change in the established pattern of the plot. That's structural change, so uh, you could have a time series plot uh, where you could describe the data as seasonal, but there's also a structural change in there. So a time series plot may be described by more than one of these things. Uh, they're not mutually exclusive, uh, so just keep that in mind as well. And there's something like outliers as well. This could happen to, to any sort of data. So if you've got some increasing trend maybe, like this over time, but you have one outlier in your data like that. So this point here, definitely an outlier. But overall, you've got this increasing trend. Uh, and if you ever just connect these um, points, like a time series would do. So straight line between each point. That's our time series. That's clearly an outlier. It goes against, uh, against the pattern of the general body of data. So the definition sort of is uh, any values that stand out from the general general body of data. Values that stand out from the general body of data. Okay. So they're pretty easy to spot, should be pretty clear cut. So obviously uh, this time series plot has an increasing trend but does have a clear outlier. And the last uh, description uh, you could attribute to a time series plot uh, would be irregular or random fluctuations. And so these occur when there does not appear to be any regular pattern in the data. So for example, if you just had your data just all randomly like this, uh, there's no real pattern to it, it's just um, like that, no pattern, just up and down randomly, no cycles, no seasonality, there's no structural change in there, uh, so you can't, can't use any of, the other, um, any of the other terms to really describe this. Uh, if you uh, looked at it over time, there's not really any, maybe there's a slight um, increasing trend but not really enough to say yes this there's an increasing trend you'd rather describe it as just irregular or random fluctuations uh, so when you describe something uh, with this you, you got to um, make sure that you cannot cannot reasonably attribute uh, the pattern to any of the other things so basically there has to be no uh, no sort of real increasing or decreasing trend over time. Because if there is, then you could say it has a trend, but if it doesn't, then you can say irregular or random fluctuations. So yeah, and then yeah, so if you've got either seasonality or cycles as well, uh, you can't say it has a regular fluctuation. Lastly, we'll just look at the, uh, how can we create a time series plot on the CAS calculator. Very simple. Uh, so all you gotta do is enter your data in list and spreadsheet, uh, go to, your, uh, to the graphs page, put your two uh, variables on the uh, correct axes, so whatever your explanatory and response variables are, plot them on the X and Y axes. So make your scatter plot basically. I've already gone through this a few times. And then the only thing to do is then hover over the uh, the plot, I press control menu, so the two buttons at the same time to bring up a menu, and there will be an option there to connect the data points. So connect data points, and that will connect them a uh, straight line between each, each of the points, and that will be exactly how a time series plot will look like. 
and that'll just help you to see any trends or anything you need to do to try and describe it. So that's how you can uh, make a time series plot in your case calculator. And that will be it for this lesson, lesson 5.1.